Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special segment of Breaking the Fourth Wall. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside a special guest host today, Jeff Balky. Jeff, thanks for joining me. What's up, guys? There's no dirty David Sanchez this week. Whatever. We, we miss him. We don't miss him. It is I just it is. miss his name. Got a cool name, doesn't he? Dirty, dirty David, David Sanchez. Sanchez. Dude, I mean, come on now. Well, see, I call him Cujo. <laughs> I do. Wow, I was, gonna, I was thinking way differently. I'm glad you finished that. Because I was thinking naughty. But, uh, no, I call him Cujo. <laughs> um, oh, good. They're leaving. Good, good, good. This has happened plenty of times before. Oh, I'm sure. And they look like, remember I said Zach and Mary? Mm. Look, man. But anyway, I'll have to tell you later on why we call him Cujo. But um, so, anyways, Jeff, thank you for joining me on the show. You're welcome. Um, for those that don't know, Jeff is a f- I, would I call you a former colorist now since you've transitioned? No, I'm, I'm you're still, still a colorist. Yeah, yeah. But why don't you tell them who you are and what you do? Don't let me do it. I don't know who I am. You guys tell me. No, I uh, I <laughs> nice I'm, one. I'm a freelance colorist. I've worked um, in a lot of different indie companies like uh, Zenoscope mainly. Probably about ninety percent of my talent was put into Zenoscope. And then Image, uh, well, John Carpenter, it's everyone else. <laughs> it's like you didn't try hard enough. Well, out of the out of the over 130 books that I've worked on, mainly all of those are theirs okay. for the most part. Right. Um, so that's plus the other 10% is everyone else. <laughs> but um, but no, I, I still freelance color. You know, I'm I'm gonna keep on doing that. I don't really care what else I have going on in my life. I'm always gonna find time to be be a freelance colorist. And what I mean by that is that I am growing a little bit and I don't mean fat but I mean I'm, I'm actually nice. growing as uh that's how one of my interviews started at C2E2 <laughs> <Did it> really? <laughs> yeah but uh, I, I have my own books which are right right here Woo! Uh, right in front of us here so uh, which we will get to but let's yeah. you know let's let's this is a comic show let's talk origins yes the origin of Jeff Balke um why well, I came from Chicago and I was uh, I was uh <laughs> no, I was not gonna be naughty. But no, I, I started on MySpace a long time ago. Yeah, remember that little website, you know, MySpace. I know we were Mine's kind of just, yeah, we were talking about, talking about that earlier. <laughs> Floating around somewhere. I don't even remember if I remember lo- my login info, to be honest. <laughs> oh I guess well I gotta you know. Uh <clears throat> but I started on MySpace, I put up some black and white mm-hmm. uh pictures that I drew and people seemed to like them, but then they wanted more. Mm-hmm. Of course. So I'm like, well I don't know what else they wanted, so someone said why don't you post something colored? I hated coloring. I hated it with a passion. I hated. I just couldn't do it. So I find I found a couple of pictures that I did, which was a Spider-Man. Another one was uh, White Queen. Okay. Total night and day. Yeah. <laughs> Total. Um, but I posted them, and uh, my MySpace page just blew up. Everyone's like, "Oh, this is great. This is wonderful. Have you done this? Can you do this? Can you do this?" I'm like, "Whoa!" <laughs> you know, I I was just starting out. It's like I didn't know. But then I had people actually in the industry, other other uh, artists, come up to, or email me and say, "Hey, let let me help you build your portfolio." Mm-hmm. So they gave me their prints. Um, I put them in a portfolio. I showed them around, and then a smaller company, After Hours Press, actually hired me, and uh, I worked on their book, Fox of Falcons. Came out in two thousand seven. Now was it hard to shop around? Because like we said, I mentioned David earlier. I remember a couple of years ago, he was. Um, he had some work and he was shopping around at Wizard World to like whoever would look, you know, Marvel, DC, you know, Image, Star, anybody. Um, did you have, did you encounter any troubles trying to do that? You know what's really kind of odd? I, I didn't really, I never really left my table because I always felt guilty. Okay. Because I remember when I was a kid and I walked around the shows and an artist wasn't there, I was like, oh. So I didn't want <laughs> to really that, do that. You didn't want to be that guy right. that disappointed that kid. <laughs> exactly. Like, damn you, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. It just takes that one guy. Yeah, and I didn't want, yeah, and I didn't want to be him. But I went around every so often. Like, you know, if I had a friend, um, he and I did an awesome print together or a page or something like that. I'd be like, hey, like, let's go talk to this person after the show right. or right before the show. That was really the only time, even up to today, that I, I still really haven't gone out anywhere and... Uh, done too much. I mean, I, I did reach out to Marvel DC uh, once, but once in seven years, that's, yeah. you know, not a lot of time. You know, you bring them up. Uh, I think it was at the show we were talking, if not, it might have been even before that, when you were mentioning that you wouldn't want to work for either one of those companies. Is that true? Yeah, kind, kind yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, and the reason for that is because mainly I like to have the independence of coloring what I want to color. It's not because your book will be relaunched every other month, right? <laughs> no. 
No, I, I, I just I just like the freedom and a lot of I shouldn't say a lot, but a few of the friends that I have that work at those companies, yeah, they love it. It's awesome to put on a resume. Right. Of you course. know, I would love that. But you don't get enough you don't get all the freedom. Like with me right now being a creator, even being freelance, mm-hmm. I kinda have the the freedom to go anywhere I want. When you're with Marvel or D C and you go full time with them, that's it. That's yeah. all you're doing. So but it is. It would be kind of nice to have that stability, though. Right. I'm not uh, gonna lie about that. that. Job, <laughs> job security. The job security. The temporary yeah. job security. <laughs> oh, that's cool. But uh, okay. So getting back, you said you started ninety percent of your work for Zenscope. How did that come about? Um, I, for years, I don't, I don't know, three, four years, something like that. I, I kept on going up to Raven Gregory. Yeah. Um, I like Raven. Oh, he's he's funny. I told him he comes out here for uh, one of these cons. We're going to pizza. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Chicago, uh, Squared Circle in Chicago. It's a wrestling themed restaurant by one of the wrestlers. Oh really? And uh, he's a big wrestling fan. We talk wrestling all the time. Oh. So I was like, dude, you bring your ass back out here. We'll go. And I just, didn't even know that. Yeah. I don't know he was a wrestler. I didn't know about that place either. Yeah. He's a big wrestling fan. Oh. Hmm. Interesting fact. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta talk to him. <laughs> Get him out here for a show. Well, I told him, I says, dude, how many years has it been now? Bring your ass out. He says, well. Next time uh, Zenscope goes out there, I'll put in a request to go out there. I'm like, oh, it's... Right. <laughs> They've been out here a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'll have to inbox them. I'm like, dude, what's going on? Right. Wizards coming up. Make it happen. But anyways, go ahead. Um, what was I talking about? Zenscope. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> we were just talking about Raven. I, I, don't, I don't know. We were talking about Raven. Well, but that's how it started. You well, said you gave your work to Raven. Or you contacted Raven. And <laughs> yeah, so, so I'll tell your story for you. you. Yeah, I, I was waiting. I'm just going to make shit up now. <laughs> uh, but no, I kept on going up to him at, uh, at every single show, you know, Wizard World, C2E2. And finally, April, uh, five years ago, okay. so my five-year anniversary just passed. Okay. And uh, he's like, Jeff, I got something for you. Here's my business card. He's like, contact me after the show. So I contacted him, the uh, editor-in-chief, Ralph. Mm-hmm. Um, he liked my stuff got hired right then and there nice all freelance okay um fine i, I think I, I literally jumped up and down in my chicago apartment nice and i was like oh my god and then the little old lady's like stop jumping <laughs> actually she <laughs> was doing she was doing that like, above me ah uh, she's yeah. like what are you doing I'm like stop really? it <laughs> i just happened to throw the hispanic thing but most of the time they're hispanic you know <laughs> stop it oh this one was polish stupid <laughs> <laughs> what was that i don't know dude <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how that all came about, and then they just kept throwing me work, and I'd ask them, "Hey, what else you got? What right. else you got? What else you got?" Because mm-hmm. I was very eager, eager. I wanted to work, and they just kept throwing me more and more stuff. Now, what about that other ten percent? What other companies have you worked for? Um, Image. I've got a couple things with them. Uh, Foot Soldiers uh, through Jim Kruger, mm-hmm. and then also um, um, Hack Slash. Yeah. Just a quick little story with Hack Slash and. Um, I know there's a couple other small, small little things I did. Covers. Uh, covers. Who was that? I know. Because there, there, I know there's like a the voice ET. From beyond. ET is talking up there right above the camera. But, <laughs> um, but I also worked with uh, John Carpenter. You know, the director okay, yeah. of Halloween, created Halloween. Right. Uh, so I worked with him a little bit. Uh, mainly with his wife. Uh, it's called John Carpenter's Asylum. Oh, really? You did Asylum? I didn't mm-hmm. know that. Mm-hmm. Well, I did the the original. The original Asylum. They have a, a new team working with them now. Okay. And it's it's man, it's really good. But they wanted somebody who can do painting, and I can't paint. Why not? Not digital paint. Finger paint. Uh huh. <laughs> John Carpenter, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I spelled it out on the wall, and his wife didn't like that. They probably turned it into a movie. Keep watching. <laughs> right. <laughs> like royalties, people. Royalties. <laughs> So remember last year, your big book uh, was Deadpool. Deadpool! Uh, Deadpool. How I'm did about that to get come to him about? Too. <laughs> How did that come about? Well, I worked with Marat Michaels. Um, and I love Marat. He is awesome. He, uh, is, he was a protege of Liefeld, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was one of the first artists, actually, of Image Comics back in the early 90s, I think. Because mm-hmm. I remember having the books from like 91, 92, and it says Marat. I got a Michael, sketch Michael, uh, Michael, he did at a con for me a couple years back of uh, Cable. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when he did the Shatterstar miniseries? Yes. Yeah. 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 It was right around that time. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, we just aged ourselves. But <laughs> <laughs> I got my first two gray hairs, man. I'm proud. Of I, actually, that one right here, I just want yeah. to pull out. Actually, <laughs> I trimmed my beard a couple of weeks ago. I was doing like the whole, you know, the gruff. 
So I was like, no, I gotta trim it. I'm trimming it, and I take the grate and I hang it out like this, and I'm trimming <laughs> oh the rest. <laughs> I'm proud of it, man. It's like an honor badge, you know. Like, I got a lot in my hair. Gel? I don't. You? Well, yeah, I can't I got see. A lot of gel. I don't see it's, it's over here, and I'm what my Ah, inside. okay. I can see it a little oh, on that I, side. over here. You? C- yeah. Okay. It's not so much on that side. No, Maybe it's the lighting. I want to be salt and pepper. That's probably not. I'm happy with it. <laughs> I can deal with it. Okay, so that. But anyways, uh, Marat Michaels. <laughs> So you know, hairstylist um, next uh, next episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Part two. Um, but no, um, I worked on a couple different books with him, and uh, he had this book. He's like, Jeff, do you want to work on this? I said, Sure, of course. What is it? And he's like, What's called Dead Poop? I'm like, Really? What was the first thing that came to your mind when you heard the title? Did you just like Mr. Hanky Dead or something? Is that what you thought about? <laughs> I actually thought of like, Yeah, I actually, yeah, I was about to say the piece of poop, but yeah, um, Mr. Hanky. You know, like, like laying there, like, that's dead. The second thing that I'm like, no, they can't be. Like, what, they did put them in a Deadpool costume? Like, ew, a piece of crap in Deadpool costume? That's disgusting. It's not too far off from the writing they've got now. That is Zing! now copywritten. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when he showed me the pages, I'm like, okay, this is up my alley. Okay. This is exactly what I want. It's cartoony, it's fun, it's for all ages. Was that an all ages book? I think that one was the second one, not so much right. because the covers are kind of. Yeah, but I think I think the first one was. I don't think there was any cursing. In See, there. I don't even think I, I don't remember us even getting the second one in here. And oh, if it, we did, it was gone before I got it. You know, I, I know was, I got the first one. Well, I didn't call it the second one, so it's okay. Oh yeah, fuck it. Then. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the only reason I bought the first one. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> We need the pool. I was already at that Deadpool maxed out already. You know, yeah. it was like Deadpool overload. Oh my god! But I was like, yeah, yeah. he did it. I gotta get one. Oh, yay! But yeah, and my sister's a Winnie the Pooh fan, but whatever. You know, it's it's funny with that book. I I get a lot of hate looks from people at the convention sometimes. Really? Well, the people who are diehard Winnie the Pooh fans. Yeah, because like, they go to Wizard World and yeah, see exactly. tweets and stuff. <laughs> You can't do that. The, the, uh, who is he? Winnie the Pooh. I almost said Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that to him. Like, why? Oh, just well, that. He's right here. Yeah. Like, gummy bears right behind him. Honey grenades. Hot water gun. See, I'm still taking it back. I didn't know that hardcore Winnie the Pooh fans went to, like, Wizard World. Really Nothing do. against you guys. I just didn't know you guys did that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They I did. learned something today. I saw a few of you. I know, you saw, I know some of you are watching. Yeah, how you did? From a distance. Just yeah. like... <laughs> I'm doing one of those, like walk away from your table, see what happens. Right, <laughs> come out, like pain everywhere. Okay, so you did all the work for Zensco. You did the work for all these other other uh, all these other companies. What happens next? Do you sit there and you're just like, okay, I'm going to continue to work? How did the idea spring for Urban Legends? Did that come later? Did that come as a result because of all your work? Some of the work that I was fill getting, me in, man. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill you. <laughs> I just that naughty. I love it. Um, we don't sugarcoat on the show. You should have seen the shit Sanchez has done to me on the show <laughs> on camera. <laughs> Not that I allowed it, but by the time it happened, it was like too late. Like, and I was like, I don't feel like editing it. <laughs> Just leave it. What the hell? Why not? No nudity, though. Not yet. Oh, but anyway. So I can't flop it on the table? You can if you want, but... I'll break the glass. Hey, I'm not paying for it. There's a glass? <laughs> I'm There's not glass. paying for it. Oh, I want to come back in and I like Lori. <laughs> All right. Um... No, I always said when I first got into the industry, I wanted to work um, for four or five years. I wanted to work with other people. I wanted to see how a comic book is put together. Mm-hmm. Kind of had an idea, but now I know the craziness. It's not I like watching a Mister Rogers video where he puts the videotape in the in the wall. He's like, "We're at the peanut butter factory. Remember that?" And it would show you how peanut butter is made. Yeah. It's not like that, right? You just can't put a uh, a DVD or now a Blu-ray. DVD into uh, the player well, like, that's pirate. how you make a comic now you can pirate it yeah towards uh, how to make a comic dot com you know and you yeah, want to know how to pirate stuff yeah come and ask me no I'm kidding I'm <laughs> kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding <laughs> my god I'm not gonna get blackballed um not on this show not, no not, no good uh, one thing that uh, you mentioned to me a while back was how you knew the moment that you wanted to work in comics it had something to do with Stan Lee didn't it it did 90 fucking Stan the man Stan the man freaking Lee yeah, and Mark Bagley Actually. Mark Bagley was one of was I will say was one of my favorite artists. Oh, he still on. is for me. It, not to me so much. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could help me understand this because obviously I'm not an artist. A lot of uh, well, yeah, no, I, I love that card set. 
<laughs> a lot of the artists that I grew up on in the 90s, like Jim Lee, a Sylvestri, we're not going to say Liefeld because this style's exactly the same. This is the kid show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bagley is a big, uh, big example. I noticed a lot of artists over the years, they say, well, you know, your art needs to grow. You evolve your style. But Sylvester's style, in my opinion, and my co-host's opinion, not you, but David, and a couple other people, they like it looks like shit now. Like there's less uh, a lot. I notice a lot less inking, and more just straight pencils and more shading. Yeah. But it tends to look a little bit sloppier. With Mark Bagley, my whole thing was in the '90s, he drew Spider-Man the way I think Spider-Man should always look. He looked 98, like he was 98 pounds, but he had all this ripped muscle. The lines were very sharp and edgy. Whereas now, when you jumped over to Ultimate Spider-Man, his line work got a lot more round, a little bit more cartoony, and it just lost it for me. You know, and it's like when a lot of artists say they evolve. It, in truth, to me at least, they're devolving. You know what I mean? So, so, you, so do you just think they're kind of? Now I'm asking you. Hey, whatever. <laughs> so do you think they're just doing it just, uh, just c c because they have too much work and they're? See, that's the thing. I don't know. I was hoping you could maybe shed some light on that. Like, why do you think these great artists say that, you know it goes like this? But then when you really look at the quality, if you compare a '90 Mark Bagley book to a 2014 Mark Carnage. Bagley book. Oh. Oh, dude, I love I Maximum know. Carnage. That's when it was huge when I met these guys. Introdu like, yeah. Oh. I remember I met Bagley the first time a couple years ago when Wizards still did their fan awards. Yes. And I was yeah. so nervous to walk okay. up to him because he was sitting a couple aisles over. One thing I loved about the fan awards, fans never knew that they could sit as close as they can get because the seats were there. Right. I was like, fuck that. I'm sitting where I can sit, right. you know? <laughs> so he's sitting one aisle over. And I look at the kid I was with at the time, and I was just like, dude, take these two books, Spider-Man 375 yep. with the foil cover, and 400, <laughs> the tombstone. Yeah. Just go get them signed for me. So after the show, he's like, why'd you send it? Why don't you just come talk to me? I was like, dude, I was nervous, you know? <laughs> so we're talking. I says, you know, I have the 1994 Fleer Spider-Man set from the, that Venom. I says, I've got that set twice over. So <laughs> I love that damn card set. He says, he appreciates it. He says, you know, I stood in my basement drawing that and a lot of people don't know that a lot of people don't appreciate that you know you don't hear feedback on stuff like that right. and he's like i really appreciate it and i was like wow geek moment yeah. and then <laughs> to th um then ultimate spider-man really starts to hit that stride and i'm just like that's not the same kind of art you know like, that's not spider-man it's spider-man so i don't know i was hoping you could shed some light well i don't that could be now I, i'm i can't speak for everything like for marvel or, okay what's your opinion like on it my thing with that is that Mark, I think at that when Ultimate Spider-Man was coming out, I believe he was also doing stuff for DC. Because he, he had Because he did Justice League. I remember he was working on a lot of Justice League of America. Well, he books. had Blackest Night as well. He did do Blackest. He Night. did do a few. I know he did the covers. I don't know if he mm -hmm. did the full. No, I think he did full interiors as well. I believe Black, he started. He did a few. He wasn't there long. No, he no. did DC less than a year. Yeah, I think so. But I remember Batman was pretty good though. I remember seeing that and I'm like, okay, he's over here, he's over here. I'm like, wow, he's mm -hmm. kind of spread. And I think just when it comes down to now, I'm, I'm going to speak from experience when it comes to time frames. Okay. I have as a colorist four days to get a book colored up, a full 22 page, 24, however many pages it is. Mm -hmm. Artists can get anywhere, they get a little bit more in four days because right. you know, they're doing the layouts and all this other kind of stuff. Um, and I think a lot of artists get like maybe a month. Okay. But you figure if you've got five or six books on your plate that are all due, unfortunately, at the same time, you gotta you gotta rush. You right, gotta get right, all that right. kind of stuff done. I don't know if that's the case or not. I would it say it makes me feel better. <laughs> okay, now here, let me throw this at you, Mark Silvestri. That guy puts out a cover once yes. every three years. What or else something? does he do? He owns a company. That's true. That's true. But I mean, I figure you, you figure if he's gonna sit there and put out one piece, you know, you think. The what about Eric Larson? I don't think his quality has gone down. I think the shading in it a little bit, but not so much the line I think it's work. kind of just, I, I think it's yeah. kind of plateaued. It's, it's kind of the same. Mm -hmm. Well, except for when he but did. That's how life felt. Is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've, I've said it since the first season. We are now in season three, but since the first season, I've said we have to have life held on this show. That would Because be. <laughs> his name tends to pop up every other episode yes. for some reason. <laughs> For those of you out there who have been watching us since the beginning, you know what I mean. For some reason, <laughs> his name pops up very frequently. I think more than the host's name sometimes. <laughs> but, but uh, no, yeah, that is true. He does own the company. But in terms of art, you think, okay, you know, hey, I'm going to put out one piece a year. He'd be able to concentrate on the piece. You know, like, hey, don't bother me for, you know, 24 hours or something. I'm he gonna... did Hulk, right? 
like see like uh, that's one thing that really pissed me off is when Marvel and DC use the creator names to help sell a book and it's the first issue because Hulk he did the cover he did the covers for the first three or four issues right and I think he did the interiors for the first issue and a half I want to say and that was it okay that's what I thought because I know I've got them at home too and I'm like that's it you hyped it up on Sylvester and Wade yeah and it's all Wade and then they get uh, Sylvester's replacement which was uh, Lennon Yu you know, because their styles are pretty similar. Yeah. Hoping nobody would catch it. Like, dude, no, we're going to catch it. <laughs> Sylvester decided not to do it, you know? Right. <laughs> I like Sylvester. I met him. Oh, I love, I love Huge Sylvester. guy. Yeah. Like, tall like as an oak tree. 20 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very nice. So is his wife. Bridget. I met her once. Yeah, once I met her. That was what I remember. The one time I met her, she was walking around Wizard in a Top Cow thong. I believe it. It's like, wow. Uh, it was my first con. Days. <laughs> yeah, I was like, way to go, first con. Right? I'm coming back next year for sure with more than five bucks in my pocket. <laughs> okay, so transitioning. Yeah. When do you decide, okay, you know what, I want to put my own shit out? I, ju- I just kind of, I did it, Okay. in all honesty. I wasn't having a lot of stuff actually hit the shelves in the comic stores. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what, I got to keep my name out there. I said, I'm like, this is the time that I have to do it. I got to put my own stuff. I want to help out a lot of other people. So... I think it's time for me to do it, and I did. And how did it come about? Tell me all about Urban Legends. Oh, boy. Down to the writers, to the artists. Because <laughs> now you're playing more of a backstage role, kind of. In, in kind of. Now yeah. you're becoming the Mark Sylvester. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. And I, 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 I strive to get mm. to that level. You know, of the Mark Sylvester, Mar- maybe, maybe not Marvel DC as of right now, not yet. I'll take over later on. But, <laughs> but I would like love... Like Dan to who? The, who? <laughs> Who's that? Jim who? Yeah. Um, Jimmy Choo. Um, uh, God, if you guys are watching, please, you don't know who I am. Just don't, <laughs> don't come. Uh, <laughs> don't find me. I, I don't do anything anymore. Um, anyway. <laughs> so what's the point of this? We're done. Yeah, I'm, yeah, we're, yeah, I'm, I'm fired. But anyway, um, so how this actually came about was, uh, with Urban Legends, we were, we were driving, because we drive to all the shows, as, yeah. as I told you before, and a lot of you might know if you know who I am. We drive to every single every convention that we go to, and that's about thirty a year, from San Diego to Canada to New York to Florida, from Time Seattle. To trade that truck in pretty soon. You know what? We've already gone through a transmission, so we're we're, we're in it for a long haul for this bad boy. It has I think you guys should get like a separate con vehicle, and then your everyday vehicle. <laughs> well, actually, uh, speaking of that, we're gonna we're gonna be renting cars. I think. Person, so we're not putting that all the stress on our car, yeah. and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than actually flying. Yeah, I hate flying. Yeah, but uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> we're sitting in the car, and I'm like, God, it'd be a really good idea if we came up with this called Urban Legends. And uh, Brandon, my the the co-creator and editor, who's kind of walking back and forth back there, he was the voice we heard earlier. He was the, yeah, the, the voice yeah, he was from the beyond. Voice. He was the ET. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he was. Um, he and I were, were just kind of chatting back and forth about it. He's like, "Well, what would you want to do with it?" I said, "Well, I wanna, I wanna have a, the regular urban legends, but I want to kind of com- like combine them together or something." He's like, "What the hell does that mean?" Yeah, seriously, because you just <laughs> lost me. <laughs> and I said, "I want to have them all focused in one town." Okay. So all these urban legends, they all happen in one specific town. So a continuity. For some reason, of course, we know why, but I'm not going to tell you why because you got to buy the books. So, so, like, the first issue here, when, when we came up with this one, I wanted it to be because we were actually in a car, and uh, we were getting kind of freaked out we thought there was, like, somebody behind us. And it's like, God, that's a good urban legend. Always look in the back seat of your car before you actually get in it because you never know who or what is back there. And so that is kind of... Yes. <laughs> we look at your car now, but it's not going to do anything. It's light outside. But... <laughs> So we, we, we took that and we kind of twisted it just a little bit. We kind of made it like our own version of that. Um, I'm not going to tell you too much, but we have our two main characters that are going to be in the ongoing, because this is an ongoing series. Our two main characters make a cameo. Okay. Um, you probably won't pick them out who they are necessarily right away. Of course, now that I said it, you might. But now I know what to look for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, the second issue, the same kind of thing. The s- our story, what we, our vision, okay. actually really doesn't come into play until the third issue. Now, do you have an end in mind already? An end? Yeah. Like, you know how, like, 
uh, usually when you start off with a story, you already envision how the entire story and how you want to tell it and when it'll come. Dad, I thought you meant like issue like 100 or something. I'm like, no! Oh, not a specific going. number, just okay. how you would like to end the series. <laughs> we have a few different arcs, actually, okay. uh, that, w- that we're going to put into this. And uh, I'd like to see it go to uh, 100 issues. Hell, even 50, I would I'd be love like, it. wow. Because a lot of books don't go that high anymore. No, it's, it, it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a milestone. <laughs> You know, it, it's a milestone to get that high. I want to get right, to 25. Right, right. Yeah, that'd be something. Dude, promise me something. What's up? You guys get to 25 issues. Yes. Give me a Fatal Attractions kind of cover. <laughs> With a little hologram card on the side. Right. I mean, look, dude, if you're going to charge me X amount of dollars for these plain variants, yeah, they're good art on some of them, but there's no catch. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing. If you're going to make me pay this much, you might as well give me the damn gimmick cover. Right. <laughs> I'll take a gimmick cover as long as it's not every other issue. Well, we don't want to do gimmick covers. We have one that we're going to do, which is going to be kind of cool, and that's when we introduce uh, Miss Bloody Mary. Oh. So we're going to do, oh yeah, she's coming. I've always hated that one. She's oh, You're going to hate this even more, and clowns. I, I, Wait till uh, you see that one. Like, I avoided Tony Todd at C2V2. Because it's Candyman, <laughs> just like, like oh, yeah. fuck you, Tony. I, they're like, you know Ernie Hudson's back there. You're a huge Ghostbusters fan, but I don't like Candyman. <laughs> Well, needless to say, I didn't go back there. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, um, but that's going to wrap up the first part because we're going to be a uh, two-part special, just in case you didn't know. Yay! Because we've, you've got a lot of interesting things to say, and I'm sure everybody to wants say. to hear it. Yeah. Do you really? I was fucking around. I want to talk No, I really do. Okay, go okay. here. All right. Fine, go away. I'll talk. I'll keep my show now. We'll, we'll, br- we'll bring Brandon in here, the, the voice in the pad, the voice in whatever. So now your show, my show becomes uh, under your banner. You just say you don't want to talk to me. Fuck off, go away. You, I talk to you now. You come. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like that. I want to hear him talk. You know what? That might be pretty damn interesting. I want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking his head. No. <laughs> Who's driving? He is. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but I know how to get home. Okay, cool. I got to try. I'll give you right. <laughs> It'll be a long drive, I'm sure. You're going back to Wisconsin, right? Uh. Yeah, yeah. Dry. Fuck it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> All right, so we'll meet you. We'll see you guys back next week where we get part two with Jeff Balky. Till then, I'm still a junior, and thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.